Welcome to Spaceverse, your portal to cosmic adventures. SpaceX has just pulled off something truly remarkable, marking a huge milestone in science and engineering, arguably the most impressive achievement since humans first set foot on the moon. But what we've seen so far is just the beginning of Starship's potential. This rocket is set to revolutionize space travel and, according to Elon Musk's ambitious vision, become the backbone of an interplanetary transport system that could one day support a city on Mars. While Elon often makes it sound like Mars is just around the corner, the details of how we'll actually get there are still a bit unclear. So, we know where we are today and where we want to go, but what has to happen in between to make it all a reality? Every time SpaceX launches Starship, it pushes the boundaries of space exploration and achieves something historic. Even when Starship made its infamous attempt, creating a massive crater on Earth, spinning for a couple of minutes and eventually exploding, it was still a major win. Why? Because it marked the launch of the most powerful rocket ever to take off. That alone was a huge leap forward in SpaceX's mission to revolutionize space travel. But that's just the beginning. To bring Elon Musk's grand vision to life, a vision that includes sending humans to Mars and establishing a sustainable outpost, SpaceX will need to keep this momentum going. They'll need to continue breaking new ground, hitting improbable milestones, and turning what once seemed impossible into reality. And while they've made tremendous progress so far, the real work lies in reaching three major milestones that will pave the way for the future. Achieving orbit, landing on the moon, and ultimately reaching Mars. While SpaceX has been conducting orbital test flights for Starship over the past year, it hasn't quite orbited the Earth yet, which might sound confusing. Here's the deal. Starship is huge. It's the largest objects ever launched into space by a huge margin. That size makes it both amazing and a bit dangerous. If Starship were to reach orbital velocity, it would essentially be in a constant state of freefall, but moving forward so fast that it falls around the Earth. Still a little mind-bending, right? Think of throwing a baseball. The harder you throw it, the further it will travel before Earth's gravity pulls it down. Now picture throwing it so hard that it travels 100 miles before gravity takes hold. Here's where it gets interesting. The Earth itself curves downward, moving away from the ball, giving it more space to travel before it eventually hits the ground. The ball is still falling, but the ground keeps moving further away. If you could throw it fast enough, the Earth would curve away so much that the ball would travel all the way around and hit you in the back of the head. That's orbit. Now, what SpaceX is doing with Starship is getting it up to a speed where it can almost make it around the Earth. But it's still moving slow enough that gravity will eventually catch up, bringing it back down. The benefit of this approach is that if something goes wrong and every system fails, Starship will fall back to Earth in a predictable spot like the middle of the Indian Ocean, where no one will get hurt. But if Starship were to go just a little faster, it would reach orbital velocity. That means the rocket would enter a state of constant freefall, circling the Earth without ever touching it, just like satellites. Now imagine Starship achieving orbital velocity only to experience a total system failure. That would leave a giant steel structure spinning uncontrollably around Earth. Definitely not a good situation. Over time, even the thin atmosphere up there will gradually slow Starship down, causing it to eventually fall back to Earth's gravity. This happens all the time with spent rocket stages, old satellites, and space debris. They fall back and re-enter the atmosphere. With smaller objects, most of them burn up and disintegrate, but sometimes a small chunk makes it to the ground. In fact, a few North American farmers have found pieces of SpaceX metal in their fields, though the impact is minimal. Now, imagine that same scenario with Starship. This time, it won't just be a few small bits of metal, there will be a lot more. This is why achieving a full orbit will be a huge milestone for Starship. While not as dramatic as catching a rocket with a giant robot tower, it will involve getting the ship up to higher speeds than ever before and performing a controlled deorbit burn to slow it down and return safely to Earth. That's the real orbital test flight. Once SpaceX pulls that off, the next challenge will be successfully deploying a payload into orbit. And while Elon Musk often makes it sound simple, this is no small task. Deploying a payload presents a whole new set of challenges. Most rockets use a disposable cargo fairing, a clamshell-like nose cone that drops away once the rocket clears the atmosphere. This allows the payload to be released. Starship, however, doesn't operate this way. 
The only other vehicle comparable in this regard would be the old space shuttle, which had cargo bay doors that opened and closed to deploy payloads. This is a complex process, not something Starship can do just yet. However, SpaceX has a simpler workaround for now. The Pez Dispenser Instead of the traditional approach of opening a massive cargo bay door, Starship will open a small slot on its backside to deploy its payload. The reason this works is because SpaceX knows exactly what the first Starships will be launching into orbit. Starlink Satellites These satellites are designed to be long, wide, and thin, so the slot in Starship only needs to be big enough to release one satellite at a time, much like how a Pez dispenser works. The internal mechanism of this system is simple but effective. Just like with Pez candies, each Starlink satellite is launched out while the next one is pushed into position, ready to be deployed. This method of dispensing satellites is efficient, allowing Starship to deliver its payload without the need for complex doors or mechanisms. If Starship can successfully reach orbit with a full load of Starlink satellites, it will have achieved a major milestone, and SpaceX will be one step closer to the next big challenge. Orbital Propellant Transfer Now, Musk may make it sound like orbital propellant transfer is the easiest part, but while the concept is straightforward, it's never actually been done before, and that's significant. The plan is for two Starships to be deployed into orbit. One will carry a payload of rocket fuel, specifically liquefied oxygen and methane, while the other will be tasked with utilizing that fuel to continue its mission. The two Starships will then rendezvous in orbit, docking in a back-to-back -back configuration. The ship carrying the fuel will transfer its payload through the docking port into the fuel tanks of the second ship. This refueling process will provide the second Starship with the energy it needs to burn and accelerate to a faster orbital velocity, allowing it to rise even higher above Earth. Docking two spacecraft in orbit is a maneuver that's been carried out since the mid-1960s. Initially, astronauts had to manually line up the two spacecraft with their eyes, a delicate operation. Over time, this responsibility has shifted to automated systems, though this is a relatively recent development. Just five years ago, when SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft approached the International Space Station, it would get very close but not quite close enough to dock. Instead, the Dragon spacecraft was grabbed by the ISS robotic arm, known as the Canadarm, and then gently guided to the docking port. Today, when Dragon travels to the ISS, the spacecraft systems communicate with the station systems, automatically aligning the two for docking. Despite the differences in hardware and software between the Dragon spacecraft and the ISS, they are able to perform this highly precise maneuver with remarkable accuracy, paving the way for even more complex tasks like orbital propellant transfer. In Elon Musk's vision, if a SpaceX vehicle can successfully dock with a NASA spacecraft, then docking two SpaceX vehicles together should, in theory, be a relatively straightforward task. However, this idea is still unproven, and it's important to understand the complexity involved. Aligning two human-sized docking ports might seem difficult, but it's a bit easier compared to trying to line up two fuel pipes that barely stick out from the back of a rocket. This adds an entirely new layer of precision and challenge. What this essentially means is that docking two starships is not as simple as pressing a button and letting them lock into place. It involves carefully maneuvering both spacecraft to meet at just the right angle and speed, almost like trying to slowly crash them together, but at a very low and controlled speed. The goal is to ensure the connection happens with extreme accuracy, making sure that the transfer of fuel or payload is successful without any major mishaps. It's a delicate balance between physics, technology, and, of course, SpaceX's proven ability to adapt and learn from each challenge. If SpaceX can master orbital docking and refueling, it will pave the way for the next major phase of Starship development. Heading to the moon. With a full tank of propellant, Starship will be able to reignite its engines and soar higher and higher, eventually reaching the moon. But SpaceX's mission to the moon isn't just for exploration, it's part of a historic commitment to NASA. Starship will be the first spacecraft in over 50 years to land humans on the moon. To make this possible, a special lunar version of Starship will be created, removing the wings and heat shield, and adding landing legs. Once ready, this variant will launch to orbit, dock with a propellant depot in space, and refuel for the journey to the moon. While getting to the moon might seem like the easy part, landing there is a whole different challenge. We've already seen how Starship lands on Earth. It enters the atmosphere at a 45 degrees angle, creating a massive fireball as it slows down with air resistance. 
As it descends further, it flattens out into a 90 degrees belly flop position to maximize drag in the final few kilometers before a dramatic landing burn. The three smaller engines ignite, flipping the Starship into a vertical position and it slowly descends to the ground. However, none of this can be done on the Moon. Without an atmosphere, there's no drag to slow Starship down, which means the lunar version of Starship will have no need for wings or a heat shield. This requires a completely different landing strategy, one that will be much more challenging but also groundbreaking. What SpaceX needs to do now is essentially relearn how to land their massive vehicle in a completely new environment. What's the worst that could happen, right? Well, landing on the moon is a monumental challenge that many have attempted and failed, even with the most advanced computer and AI technology. This is no simple task, which is why the first time Starship attempts to land on the moon, it won't have any humans on board. This is a critical milestone for SpaceX, one they need to hit as quickly as possible. The crewed Artemis moon landing is slated for 2026, though we all know that timeline is highly unlikely to be met. But that doesn't reduce the pressure, because China is accelerating its own crewed lunar landing plans. The last thing America wants is to lose a new space race to China. So the stakes are incredibly high, and SpaceX knows it must succeed in this test landing to stay ahead. If the test landing goes well, Starship will immediately begin preparing for the big event. Artemis 3, NASA's official return to the surface of the moon. What SpaceX has achieved up to this point is groundbreaking, but nothing compares to the global and cultural significance of a crewed lunar landing. This will mark a new era in space exploration, and the world will be watching. Now, assuming the moon landing goes off without a hitch, a whole new challenge awaits. Mars. This is the real mission that Starship was designed for. All the developments we've seen so far wouldn't be possible without Elon Musk's original ambition, sending large numbers of people and supplies to the Red Planet and establishing a permanent, self-sufficient outpost there. But make no mistake, this is an incredibly difficult and unprecedented goal to achieve. No matter how confident Elon might seem, landing on Mars will be a whole new level of complexity. The road to Mars is going to be long, filled with unforeseen challenges, and unlike anything humanity has ever attempted before. If we take SpaceX and Elon Musk at their word, it's entirely possible that both the Lunar Starship and the Mars Starship could be developed in parallel, with each ready for their first landing attempts in just two short years. This might seem like a bold goal, but it's not entirely out of reach. The key advantage is that the Starship we know today, designed for low Earth orbit, is not all that different from the version that would eventually be used for landing on Mars. The primary difference? The Mars Starship would be equipped with landing legs, as there won't be a Mechazilla tower on the red planet to catch the rocket. Looking at it this way, landing on Mars doesn't seem all that difficult. After completing the orbital refueling, the Starship, now equipped with legs, would be sent on its way to Mars and we'd see how it goes. Chances are, the first attempt will end in an epic crash landing on Mars, and that's perfectly fine. SpaceX's entire approach to development is built on trying, failing, learning, and trying again. What's most impressive about SpaceX is its ability to adapt and learn at an incredible pace. Take the SN series prototypes, for example. It took four explosions before Starship successfully nailed a suborbital landing burn. The first full-stack Starship Super Heavy exploded, but just one more flight later, the rocket achieved stage separation. Similarly, it only took one explosion of the upper stage in space to learn how to achieve re-entry, and one failed re-entry to perfect the first landing burn from space. The company even managed to complete the first super-heavy water landing after two booster explosions. And on the very first attempt, the super-heavy booster was caught by the tower without any failure. This is an important point to remember. SpaceX could very well fail to hit any of the milestones outlined for the Lunar and Mars missions on the first attempt. But that wouldn't be catastrophic, it would simply be part of the process. The key is learning from each success and failure. Only after refining their technology through a combination of both, will SpaceX be ready to make that giant leap to Mars. But make no mistake, there's a lot of work ahead, probably more than Elon Musk is willing to openly acknowledge. It's going to be a long journey, but that's exactly what makes SpaceX's mission so exciting. And that's it for today's SpaceX update on their ambitious plans for the Moon, Mars, and beyond. From landing Starship on the Red Planet to mastering orbital refueling, there's no shortage of challenges ahead. 
but knowing SpaceX, they're ready to learn, fail, and try again until they get it right. Stay tuned to Space First for all the latest milestones. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep looking up.